course of the last decade and a half, we have seen a lot of different people and trends come and go on YouTube. We have seen creators who were pretty much on the top of the platform slowly fade into irrelevance, and we have seen others crash and burn on their way to the top. In general, there is nothing wrong with either. At the end of the day, all good things have to come to an end at some point, and sometimes an entire genre of videos just completely loses all relevance, leaving only a select few to continue making a living in that genre of video. Specifically, when it comes to creators who make video game content, we see this happen all the time. I remember when Fortnite was really hot a couple of years ago, there were creators gaining millions of subscribers overnight and in turn making Let's hundreds of thousands to me. This is G5, no, this not a challenger. Shot the TVHC man for the $5. Yo, souls. Where them shades at? They're right here, man. They are right here, buddy. I might be wearing them on a pod, but not right now of dollars in a short span of time. But once the mainstream hype around a game dies down, and the general consumer already has more knowledge about a game, basically I'm saying when that novelty wears off, that's when a lot of these types of creators who put all their eggs into one basket usually tend to fall off. And they go from getting tens of millions of views per month to being lucky if they can break one million. And suddenly they find themselves like a car whose battery died on the way up a hill, just slowly sliding backwards. That leads me into today's video topic, where we will be talking about a fallen 2K YouTuber named YMD Gento. Back in the mid 2010s, 2K and Madden content was on fire, and videos revolving around these sports games were getting hundreds of thousands of views every single day. And this man, YMD Gento, was already at the forefront being one of the more popular people in that yeah, he was already around space. by like but as what, time 2K12? has gone on these videos 13? in general became less and less popular in fact they've been on a downturn for more than half a decade and while a few resilient creators have held strong and kept the lights on making this type of content for the majority of youtubers who were doing this they fell off drastically it's either that or they adapted their audience into other types of content and continued their career in a different genre consider guys like lsk jesse the laser and even agents who all got their big break from these games and have now made insane amounts of money as influencers it's clear that youtube yeah. is largely a game of adapt or die even i myself have changed my content style and genre several times over the last five years and while some things have remained the same over that time, I would have either personally burnt out or just completely lost to my spark if I had never changed anything. Now, when it comes to YMD Gento... What's good? What's good, Andrew? What's good, Andrew? Yeah, I think that's the biggest part for creators. Especially if you want to be number one in front of the camera and number two, like, be known as a personality instead of just making, like, faceless content. Because I think the answer is a little bit different if you're trying to make faceless content. Um, yeah, you gotta adapt, bro. You gotta adapt. I've all, I don't want to be a broken record, but just this idea that you're going to do the same content for 20 years is just dumb. It's just, it's just completely dumb. It's not even exclusive to the 2K community, the gaming community. Just this idea that you're going to be doing the same shit that you was doing in 2016 and 2023. No one is doing the exact same thing they were doing in 2016 and 2023. There's a, probably a handful of exceptions. You might look at a Casey Neistat, but even he started uh, stopped doing the daily vlogs. You know, you might be able to look at a Marquez Brownlee. Um, maybe a PewDiePie, but the exceptions are not the rule, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, and his career, you have to go all the way back to over a decade ago when he started making all kinds of content about different video games, doing walkthroughs and playing whatever he liked the most at the moment. But eventually, he really would settle on the 2K basketball series, likely because it was what was getting him the most views. And from 2K13 to 2K19, he was doing really well for himself on his YouTube channel, getting hundreds of thousands of views per day. And while he was making these basketball videos, he would also sprinkle in all types of other content from other games to vlogs, but basketball was still his bread and butter. 
And like I said, he went on like this for quite some time. He was building up this pretty successful career, amassing a couple hundred million views, which definitely had him paid. But sadly, in 2019, it was around the time that YMD would start to really struggle mentally. He would go from a family-friendly creator to saying that his new destiny was to be a rapper, and his raps were absolute garbage. <laughs> As we locked eyes, I knew what she wanted, so I grabbed her by the waist because I knew she would love it. Whispered in the end, told her how I made a living, took off the fitted cap so she could see the way spinning. She smiled. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I think um a part of his analysis that is missing, I think it was around this time when King Cobra was like his thing. And I think it was around that time where like, I don't know if it was a mental breakdown. I don't, I don't know what the fuck was going on. But all I literally remember was Gento uploading videos where he would just ramble. And like, I, I'm like, no joke chat. This is not, this is not the joke on anyone. The words he was saying would literally not make sense. He, he would, he would literally, the words he was saying were not coherent he would go from, and maybe this is hyperbolic, he'd be talking about the NBA. Two sentences later, he's talking about the government. Two sentences later, he's talking about milk. Two sentences later, he's talking about Italy. And like, shit just didn't make sense, but they were all flowing. I don't know, man. I don't... The shake and bake... Yo, the shake and bake ramble... Shit was crazy, bro. Shit was crazy. <laughs> he said it was pardon for a stop. Stop, bro. Stop, stop, stop. Either she wanted me in her or she must have been shy. Cause she said she was a virgin and really wanna try anything that I wanna would tell be streak of Hear me and hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. And people would call him out for his strange tweets and erratic behavior. Yeah, okay, okay. How okay, you gonna tell someone to die over the internet, over a meme? Like, what is wrong with you, my guy? Like, you literally have issues. And I kind of, I do feel bad for him. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I don't want to roast him because I feel bad for dude because he's living in, like, a fake world. Like, he's calling himself King Cobra. You see the emoji. He's saying Cool, bro. It's, it's not, it's not even like, maybe I'm explaining it wrong. But I'm telling you right now, it's not just switching from one topic to the next in two sentences it's literally he was he was saying gibberish damn near like english he was saying english words but it was gibberish like shit was crazy bro saying what's my name this dude he want he, he's living in an alternate reality this man is a weirdo no one should be this negative there is no reason to be this negative there's no reason to treat people like this over the internet who cares it's the internet that's why you were right and my shit say what? King what? Them niggas will never make life be on our level. It's impossible. It'll always be late. I don't know the year, but it's late for them. No bullshit, chief. Look at this shit. Who? But look, though. My skin brown. Literally. Hey, yo. I literally was about to show you niggas how to get... How to get girls easy. Bitch. Flawless victory. Not even close. Carnage. K. Now in the end, Gento would claim these things he was saying and doing were all just some sort of act. And that he was basically just playing a new persona for the YouTube audience. Because previously, he was making videos for kids. When the character took off, there were a lot took of off. scenes. Let's call them scenes. That's what they were. I'm not only pitching myself as Took a creator, I'm pitching myself as an artist, what? I'm pitching myself as Yo, Cardiac, active. not too much, bro. Not too much not on Big O. Not a gamer. Not the happy, lit, have fun, be positive Gento. There has to be more to life than that. Especially when there's days I don't feel like being happy, lit. See what I'm saying? I don't feel like being that character for you guys. I'm sorry. So I'm like, I'm going to venture off to something different. Look at how many other... 2k youtubers ventured off into something different ultimately he ended up blaming the youtube algorithm for his eventual demise 
As he would claim that taking a month off of making videos to go to some sort of rehabilitation is what put the nail in the coffin for his career. I go back to the old Gento, just like I predicted in May 2019. Numbers are trash, thanks to algorithm. Algorithm got... Chat. And, and this is this is what I'm talking about, bro. This is what I'm talking about. A lot of y'all just need to be realistic or situation uh, with your situation and truly like hold yourself fucking accountable. Out of everything he said, I'm not gonna lie. I I would have been more okay with him dead ass blaming his mental health than saying some shit like that. I think this also shows that I'm gonna just keep it a stack. A lot of y'all favorite YouTubers truly do not know how YouTube works. They have their favorite creators. They made videos themselves. They kept on improving the editing in a subjective fashion. They kept on improving their titles and thumbnails in an objective fashion. And they blew up on YouTube. Did not really mean that they actually knew what they was doing for real. You know what I'm saying? When you go on shit like this and you blame the, the, the failure of your career to the algorithm because you took a month off, what data do you got to back that up? What, what data do you got to back that up aside from just the views being down? Was your sample size big enough? Were you reflective of how your channel was before you took the break? Because if you was on some bullshit before you left, which from the sounds of it, it, it did sound like he was, even when you return, shit just isn't going to go back to your prime numbers just because you fucking returned. I just think this idea of blaming the algorithm just, just takes away a lot of accountability from the creator. Not to say that the algorithm doesn't matter at all, but a lot of these algorithms, push comes to shove, it's not 100% um, reaction based to, to the viewer, but a lot of it is reaction based to the viewer. A lot of it is, a lot of it is automated. You, the, you know, the YouTube algorithm just doesn't pick a video they want to push. It's based off of like your, your watch history. It's based off of the data that YouTube receives from the shit that you like, the things that you comment on, the shit that you click on, the shit that you watch all the way through, the shit, the shit that you don't watch all the way through, the shit that you search. So to blame your demise on the algorithm, shit is crazy, bro. Shit is crazy. Got so messed up, my notifications were broken. That's algorithm. That's literally algorithm. I can make a fire video right now. But if it doesn't go crazy on the algorithm, it is what it is. I'm losing everything next week. And um, it sucks because we had a strong decade grinding on the channel. Now, with all due respect to him, that month off had nothing to do with his downfall. There's been so many people who have taken much more time off of YouTube and came back to be even more successful. Oh, perfect example. Perfect example. We watched we watch bro last stream. Shout out to MDJ. Bro, bro, uh, bro literally took a three year break. Three year break. Came back first video 97K. Next video 67. Next video 42. Next video 59. On pace for probably what, 70 to 80? And this is a creator, I, I know Chad is saying Corey, but that's like high tier shit, 0.001%. We're talking about a dude that um, built a following three plus years ago, and it wasn't the craziest cult following that, you know, his floor is so high, he can just come back and drop 500,000. MDJ comfortably is back. Com comfortably. Not a lot of NBA content creators making the content that he makes is pulling these numbers, and he's back. So are we just going to sit here and give all that credit to the algorithm and luck? No. He knew his fucking audience. He knew what his audience wanted. It was NBA analysis. He's providing good NBA analysis on shit that's relevant, and it's hitting the algorithm. 
It's hitting the algorithm. Now, if he came back and, I don't know, did psychological analysis on the FBI, then, yeah, his numbers would be fucking ass. The reason why is because everyone that subscribed to him subscribed for NBA content, and now all of a sudden, you're uploading FBI analysis. Well, that's not what I fucking asked for. That's all I'm saying, man. As someone who has done this for my job for almost five years, I know it's easy to feel like the algorithm is out to get you when things don't seem like they are going right. But I promise if you make videos people want to click and you can retain the viewer and gain new subscribers when they show your videos to new people, YouTube will definitely continue to help you out. This job is a series of highs and lows like a damn roller coaster. You cannot get too much of an ego when you are soaring and you really do have to sustain during the down periods and keep producing what has either worked for you in the past or be brave and decide to blaze a new trail with a new style of content. I think he was just trying to do too much at some point and he was always talking about all this different drama in his life and calling other content creators out just basically being too much about the personal and with the type of audience he had cultivated they were really not trying to hear that and really just wanted to see an upbeat funny guy play some games. The other thing is when it comes to his downfall is that it seems like this guy was really never willing to take much accountability as he would also place a lot of the blame on his ex-girlfriend thank you saying that basically she wanted him to stop smoking reefer and that in turn that completely ruined his life and destroyed basically any motivation that he had and now over three years later we fast forward to today where this man has officially announced that he has lost it all and is homeless it's not looking good i have two options left i could a let's say i get a nine to five and i make like 300 a week that's 1200 a month i get a roommate That'll charge about a thousand, eleven hundred, maybe, maybe the entire twelve hundred to sleep on your couch. I would literally have to work every single day just to have that rent money to sleep on someone's couch. And now he apparently does have a job, and hopefully he will be back on his feet again soon. I guess I just made this video because I feel like it shows the harsh reality of someone who was once on top of their genre online, and has now fallen from grace. I do wish the best for this man moving forward, and hope he can once again rise up the ranks and even make a living online. Quite frankly, the whole situation reminds me of that quote from Moneyball. We're all told at some point in time, Billy, that we can no longer play the children's game. We just don't, don't know when that's gonna be. Some of us are told at 18, some of us are told at 40, but we're all told. YouTubing in general. Yeah. Uh, like I said, bro, I was your best for Gento, but what I'm looking at, at least from the outside looking in, is a dude that fails to hold himself accountable. And he is suffering through like the worst fear of a lot of creators right now. It's that fall off. It's that, that failure to adapt. And now that you're broke and you were used to living by yourself because at your peak, you had the certain lifestyle that you was used to. Now what the fuck do you do to maintain that lifestyle now that the numbers aren't there? Now that the numbers aren't there. Someone said it in the chat. Um, yo, does he have any still? Uh, does bro not have any skills? That's the unfortunate reality when it comes to a lot of YouTubers who did this shit full time. A lot of us blew up in high school. A lot of your favorite YouTubers that are doing this shit full time blew up in high school, did not finish college. I personally was in the opportunity to do that exact same thing, but I pushed through. I pushed through. I did not drop out. I actually graduated. Um... Which is one of the things I'm most proud of in my lifetime so far. It was the fact that I did push through and didn't just go to YouTube full time. Even though the numbers technically showed that I could have went to YouTube full time. So when you're doing all of this this title thumbnail work. Um, you know, you're, you're gaining skills as an editor. I'm going to be honest, chat. A lot of that doesn't really translate to regular 9-to-5 jobs. 
It doesn't. It doesn't. I also want you, like, you, you can say, uh, this thumbnail design translate to graphic design. Maybe you can get into a graphic design work. I'm going to be honest, you can get away with a lot of shitty thumbnails on YouTube. In some niches, they even cater their shit to actually look ass to be more relatable. Like, motherfuckers like DJ Academics. Have y'all seen a DJ Academics thumbnail before? You think that shit is going to... You think that shit is going to translate to a graphic design career? Hell no. You know? A lot of the editing is basic. You're not going to, you know, get a career in editing. And a lot of your full-time YouTubers have editors anyway. So they don't even do the thumbnail work for their videos. They don't even do the editing work for their videos. All they're good at is literally just being a personality... Coming up with ideas and executing those ideas. A lot of your favorite YouTubers. I'm just keep it a beat. I'm just I'm just keep it a beat. So my my advice to y'all on this YouTubing shit. Be very, very sure of yourself and be as secure as possible before you go full time. Like, I'm not going to lie, if I didn't, number one, finish college, like, this this was my prerequis prerequisite to taking that leap of faith to doing this shit full time. Number one, I wanted to finish college. I wanted to have that degree and finish that shit. Number two, I wanted a source of income that did not rely on AdSense. Did not rely on AdSense. Whether that be on Let's Keep It a Buck, Souls and Sage, even though if you add them up, it's pretty significant money. But I wanted to come up with a way where I can pay rent, utilities, and shit every single month. And that had nothing to do with the views, with, you know, the performance of my videos. Shout out again to Agent. Shout out to Low. Shout out to Team Playback for giving me that opportunity. To work for them. Because that provided that security for me. A lot of people jump into this shit just way too soon. Without really thinking long term. And now that you're. I don't know. Five, seven years into your career. Now what you gotta do. Now what are you gonna do? 